Bitcoin in the stock market receiving massive pumpage to the upside today as the FOMC meeting triggers the moon boys into a gooey moon explosion. The DXY is right now receiving an itsy bitsy pullback at the most critical long term resistance that exists for the past two decades. But the big question now, is this the beginning of the revenge of the moon boys? I'm your host, Marky Moonboy, and in this video, I will show you for certain that the Moon Boys are itching in all of the right places for a reach around surprise revenge attack on the baby bears. And let's just say this is gonna get messy. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, turn on those ghost notifications so you never miss these absolutely critical time sensitive alerts. And as well, if you're interested in any bonuses, securing your crypto, getting altcoins, trading, make sure to check out all the fantastic links below and tutorials in the description as well. I have one Twitter and one Instagram and they are both in the description below. And without any further ado, let's uh, dump on it. Unbelievably big, as right now it seems as though the Bitcoin tides are turning and the baby bears diapers are getting soaked as we are about to enter what could be the biggest switcheroo of the past two years for Bitcoin. And this is ginormous, gigantic. Uh, and actually, yes, so Bitcoin is actually breaking that trend line, that upper trend line, if this is a two month falling wedge, uh, beginning potentially the biggest breakout that we've seen in many, many months. And this is huge. And with the DXY now seeing its first red candle in, uh, in an entire month, which is just mind blowing, first of all, uh, red weekly candle, um, this is very big and it could not come at a better place. But the big question is, will this continue or will the DXY pull its own reach around surprise and uh, you know leave the moon boys begging for uh, begging for mercy. And um, before we get back into the charts, here we have Bitcoin's mayor multiple nearing point of undervaluation ahead of this Fed uh, FOMC meeting. Uh, this, this is absolutely just very big here. And so Bitcoin appears to be in the final stage of a bear market characterized by undervaluation and submission, a popular technical analysis indicator suggests. And the mayor, uh, the bear, or sorry, the uh, mayor multiple is something um, I remember first looking at probably like two or three years ago. Actually, I think the first time I talked about it was probably 2019 or maybe it was 2020, but um, it's something that I've heard about a lot. I've been watching, you know, every once in a while when it pops up, but this is just very big here. So the indication comes as the market braces for rapid liquidity tightening by the US Fed. Uh, Bitcoin's mare multiple, the ratio of crypto's price to the 200 day SMA is just shy of 0.8. In other words, crypto is trading nearly at a 20% discount to its 200 day SMA. And this price structure has been relatively rare uh, for all of Bitcoin's history, right? Over a decade, uh, making this 0.8 reading on the mirror multiple a point of undervaluation. So this is absolutely gargantuan. In the past though, the indicator has printed double bottom under 0.8 during bear cycles with the second dip under that critical level, marking the capitulation of longs and eventual price bottom. And this indicator's impending dip under 0.8 could be the second of the 2021-2022 cycle, bear cycle. And capitulation refers to the point in a market downturn when investors give up on recapturing lost gains and sell rather than hold on a given asset. And so this is just very big. So uh, before we go any further with this, one thing that I think is makes the most sense of anything is that Bitcoin did not go as high as many people thought it would. It did not hit six digits. It did not hit 100,000. And it did not... Uh, reverse. I mean, we can just show you on the chart. When it got to these levels here, many people were screaming right here. Uh, many people believed uh, wholeheartedly that this pump right here was what was going to take us to 100k and give us a blow off top, and then we would enter a bear cycle, right? Uh, so we had this initial pump, we had this this drop, and uh, at this time, a lot of people it was kind of like split decision. It was thinking, okay, well, we need to get a bounce here, otherwise, it's it's done. And eventually we did get that bounce. So it was fairly easy for people to say, okay, this is it then. This is the pump. This pump right here is going to take us to six digits. It's going to take us to 100K. And it simply didn't. So the Bitcoin bull market of 2021 was rather underwhelming. Okay. It, it was not, it did not go as high as people thought. So I think it reasons to uh, assume that it also is possible that this bear cycle, this bear market may not go as low as a lot of people think it will, right? Bitcoin did not go as high as a lot of people thought it would. So isn't it at least somewhat reasonable to think, okay, well, maybe it won't go as low. Could it? Absolutely. But my point is, we didn't really get insanely overextended with price uh, 
Uh, and so what makes people believe we could go down to 20, 15, 10K, right? I think that's a little uh, bonkers. I think the very lowest, in my opinion, again, is right around that 30K level. And we're going to be getting into more about that in just a few seconds here, just a few minutes. But Bitcoin bear market floors of past cycles are typically hammered out in two phases re relative to that 0.8 metric we just talked about. Uh, first in the early stage of the bear market and then following a major capitulation event. And it's currently hovering above this key level and what could be argued the second phase. Basically the end of that uh, massive dumpage confirmed. We saw it in 2018. Uh, then we saw something very similar in 2019 and 2020 with the, um, the massive crash there. And we saw something in uh, summer of last year is what we just talked about. This right here, the summer of last year. And so, you know, they're basically arguing, you know, is this, let me zoom in here, is this exactly where we are right now before another leg up? And I just think all bias aside, all opinion aside, that looks more like yes than it does no. And as well, what happened the last time the Fed came up with a subsequent rate hike after being zero for a long time? Bitcoin entered the 2017 bull market and you see that charted here, okay? Where Bitcoin absolutely began the explosion of a lifetime. And here we go, something similar. So it's just something, uh, food for thought here. But as well, what I just mentioned a second ago, uh, MicroStrategy, planning, you know, planning for Bitcoin to never get below 21,000. MicroStrategy, one of the biggest whales in the space. The company with the world's largest Bitcoin corporate treasury went as far as to say that it would stop its Bitcoin buys in such a scenario. But um, here, as far as Bitcoin, as far as where Bitcoin needs to fall, we took out a loan at 25% LTV. The margin call occurs 50% LTV. So essentially, Bitcoin needs to get cut in half or get to about 40 or sorry, 21,000 before we'd have a margin call. That said, before it gets to 50%, we would contribute more Bitcoin to the collateral package so it never gets there. So we don't ever get into a situation of March call also. MicroStrategy basically saying we will prevent Bitcoin price from getting to those levels. Uh, and MicroStrategy thus appeared to state that it would actively support Bitcoin markets during a major capitulation, reporting Bitcoin price forecasts currently call for between 25 to 30,000 is a worst case scenario. So again, giving a little bit of wiggle room uh, for that margin call, you know, not quite down to 21, but again, it could it get worse than everyone's saying is a worst case scenario? Absolutely. In fact, it usually does. Uh, that doesn't mean it will, but it's just something very important. And before we continue with the charts as well, uh, absolutely beautiful to see Joe Rogan commands an absolutely massive, uh, uh, very loyal fan base. And um, he just recently said on a podcast about, you know, seeing Bitcoin as a viable form of currency. Uh, said, he said that the government's freaking out. And he, he said, like, he gave a good example of a CBDC or a central bank issued digital currency and how they could, you know, decide if, if they controlled your money like that, they could decide, well, we, you know, you've did this and you don't, you can't go on a vacation or, or can't do this or that. Centralized entities, that's, that's the power they have, which is exactly one of the reasons why decentralization is so important. But uh, basically, he just gave a quick example of, well, they could limit you in so many different ways of uh, how you spend your money. Because again, it wouldn't really even be your money. Uh, again, centralized money isn't really your money. Again, that's another reason I think a lot of people like the, the concept of decentralization. But um, on his podcast, which you know gets millions and millions of views, talked about Bitcoin. He's a big, you know, he's a he's an advocate of it. Basically, saying uh, he says I think of Bitcoin the same way I think of the early internet. The government didn't see it coming, and now it's a viable form of currency you can actually buy things with. Uh, you know, worrying about the the potential of a government wanting to issue their own CBDC, limiting what you can even spend your money on, like I just talked about, and basically said that it's important that uh, something like Bitcoin thrives, and it's absolutely true. I think it's very important. It's uh, I think Bitcoin is at this point, it's becoming mainstream. Back when I was making videos two or three years ago, uh, myself and many people were saying, oh, Bitcoin's not even close to being mainstream. Honestly, uh, if I would have to take a step back, I would say it's getting there. Like Bitcoin is pr pretty like, I mean, the amount of people I hear just randomly not in the crypto space uh, and the amount of things I see about crypto and NFTs is, is pretty it's a lot. Like there's a lot of people, especially like NFTs. I think, feel like everyone knows what NFTs are, even if you have no idea what uh, what Ethereum is, right? People know NFTs more than they know what Ethereum is, even though most NFTs are minted on Ethereum. So that's very big. And speaking of Ethereum, before we get into Bitcoin's chart, Ethereum eyes mini breakout above 3K as Coinbase ETH outflows hit, uh, outflows hit new record. And this is just very big. So ETH is poised for a mini bull run above 3K, primarily due to a classic bullish reversal pattern on the shorter uh, time frame chart and a huge spike in ETH outflow outflows from Coinbase. So a similar falling wedge 
what we see in Bitcoin. Uh, this is very big. It's been forming for the past uh, two months. And falling wedges appear when the price trends lower inside a range defined by two descending and contracting trend lines. Exactly what we see with Bitcoin here, uh, right here. As we already see, Bitcoin kind of trying to make that first move above this, trying to get above this 21-day moving average, which is the first obstacle. The 50-day is about uh, $2,000 above that at about 42000 And the 200-day, where we were most recently rejected at the very end of March, right around 47000 Meanwhile, Coinbase ETH outflows are hitting all-time highs here. ETH is leaving Coinbase, right? So that's usually an indicator of potentially uh, a, a run-up. We see a run-up usually uh, precede that or, or come after, of, after that. Basically, both indicators imply a surge in traders' preference to hold ETH over trading them. And uh, it also coincides with a recent recovery and upside sentiment of small ETH traders here. It does support the, the uh, idea that a falling wedge bullish reversal setup could be valid, could be validated here. And um, so that's just very important. And as well, I think if, if ETH did break out there, I think it would be absolutely very likely that a lot of the altcoins would rally as well. The market is tied together. Um, so that's absolutely ginormous. This is what we see the SPX getting a little bit of a bounce at this very critical level as well. These lows set back in uh, summer of last year, very similar to like what Bitcoin did, right around 30K. This is the equivalent of Bitcoin uh, with the SPX being um, around 41 80 or about 4,200. That is basically Bitcoin's version of 30K. And yeah, with Bitcoin, again, we're still trading uh, within this, this pattern here, uh, potentially beginning this falling wedge that everyone is talking about, giving us that pump. And again, we talked about in the last video, the, uh, the setup of a potential bull trap. So that's also very important to note. But at this time, uh, if the DXY ultimately does begin a long-term reversal here, that spells many, many gains for the moon boys. And a lot of pretty much every on-chain metric is right now showing Bitcoin could go on a multi-month run, finally. If you get a new channel, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, turn on those ghost notifications, never miss these absolutely time-sensitive alerts. As well, if there's any deals, bonuses, trading, altcoins, as well, we have new tutorials popping up now uh, for trading, great bonuses. If you're interested in trading this market, again, it's very risky. Uh, but uh, again, as I repeat every episode, everything is risky. Take everything one step at a time and use due diligence and practice risk management absolutely just so critical and as well there is a simulated trading here option on femex you just click the link here below and you go to the simulated trading option you don't have to risk a single penny and you can learn how to manage some risk without risking actual money that's anything for me that's for me